Hey guys, we're at Niemeyer's Trailer Sales in Albertville, Minnesota, and today we're going to be looking at the Fox Mountain 265 RDS fifth wheel. So we have Mitch here with us. He's going to be taking us around and showing a walkthrough of the fifth wheel. Yeah. Yeah, so nice thing about these Fox Mountains compared to, uh, you know, kind of their sister campers, the Arctic Fox, is the Fox Mountains are going to tend to be physically smaller. So this one's only going to be about 30 feet long. So pretty good size for towing. Starting in the back here, you're going to have this nice big pass-through storage compartment. So this camper is actually going to have a rear dinette. So this is actually going to be underneath the inside dinette. So tons of storage right there. You're going to have an outside uh, 110 volt outlet there. Nice big power awning that is going to have an LED light strip in it as well. So once you extend it, you can turn that light on inside and it'll illuminate the entire underside of the awning, which is very nice. This camper does come standard with the flip up more ride steps. So these steps, the way they work is you just grab them, flip them up inside the doorway here. They are hydraulically assisted, so they're very light. You just flip them up and in and then close the door there and you're good to go. Same thing when you're setting up camp, just open the door, flip them down. The legs are adjustable, so if you're on uneven ground, you can adjust them so that the legs are sturdy. Um, the Fox Mountains are going to come standard with Goodyear Endurance tires, so nice upgraded tires from the factory. Um, outside speakers, you are going to have a vent for the hood, hood fan um, above the cooktop inside. You're going to have a few things here. This is just going to be the vent for your furnace. This is going to be the freshwater fill station. So basically uh, just open up this door here and there will be a spot to stick your freshwater hose and fill up your tank. This is going to be your six gallon suburban water heater. Um, so this is a two way water heater so it will operate off of propane or 110 volt electricity depending on what you have access to. <clears throat> Moving towards the front of the camper, this is going to be your big underbelly storage compartment, you know, that most fifth wheels are going to have. So as you can see, that provides a ton of storage for, for all your gear and everything you need to bring with you. Right here is going to be your battery compartment. So you can see there are trays here for two batteries. Um, you know, the type of batteries that come with the camper are going to vary depending on the dealer. So you'll just have to ask them about that, but that's where they'll go. <clears throat> Coming around the front of the camper here, so you've got the Kurt Rotaflex pin box. So basically this base plate here, as you're traveling, it will move like this to a, kind of adapt to bumps to help give you a smoother pull. And that can also be adjusted you know, several inches um, to help get the trailer as level as possible for your truck. Your generator compartment is going to be in the front here. So this camper does not have the optional generator. So right now you can see it's just a nice big storage compartment, but it is all pre-wired for the onboard Onan Cummins propane generator. So that can be ordered as an option from the factory or installed at any point um, after the fact. So. And that's there. Right here, you're gonna have the con uh, control for your front landing gear. So basically this will raise and lower the front of the camper to help with leveling and hitching up the truck. Around on the driver's side here, you're going to have your propane tanks. So the Fox Mountains are going to come with two 30 pound propane tanks, as well as an automatic changeover regulator. So with this regulator, you can select which tank you want to draw from. Whichever tank you've selected, um, when that runs out, it will automatically switch to the other tank as long as you have that one open as well. So a nice regulator there. Here we're going to have the other side of our big pass-through storage. Again, you do have a light in there. In this compartment here, you're going to have quite a few things. So uh, you're going to have your battery disconnect switch. 
So basically whenever you're not using the camper, you can turn that switch off so that your batteries don't drain while you're not using it. You are going to have cable and satellite connections uh, pre-wired right here. You're going to have a sprayer hose connection so that actually stores just right there. So you can pull that out, hook it up there, and then you do have hot and cold water on the outside of the camper. These two drains here are going to be your low point drains. So, you know, those are mostly used for winterizing to drain water out of the water system. So those drains are nice and easy to get to right there. Here you're going to have your city water connection. So if you're camping with water hookups, you can hook your hose right up to there. And then next to it is going to be your black tank flush hookup. So you can hook a fresh water hose up to there and it'll spray water into your black tank and help clean it out. You do have a door on the bottom here as well that's removable. So basically you can pull this out and run your hoses up from underneath the camper and hook them up there and then keep this main door closed um, so that people can't access it. You do have a nice exterior light here as well as um, an outside solar connection. So you do have solar on the roof. The camper comes standard with 45 watts. Um, but you can order additional from the factory as well as purchase an additional panel that will just plug in right there and set out on the ground to help give you additional solar to charge your batteries. Underneath right here, you're going to have your sewer outlet. So your black and your gray water drains are tucked up underneath um, the skirting of the camper there. And then all of your wastewater will empty out at that one drain there. Uh, moving around to the slide out, you just have uh, venting for your refrigerator. This camper does have the optional slide topper awning, which is nice. It helps keep leaves and other debris off of the slide out so that when you go to run it in, uh, you don't have to get up there and clear it off first. This camper is going to have a hardwired power cord. So basically you don't have to mess around with um, Carrying around the, ex the detachable cord, it just stores right inside the camper here. Um, it's about 30 feet long and it is a 30 amp cord. Right here, you're going to have the switch for your power rear jacks. So these are going to be your stabilizer jacks. So when you get the camper level where you like it, you can just hit extend and the jacks will run down to the ground and help keep the camper from shaking around while you're inside. Right here, we're going to have the other side of our big pass-through storage in the back. <clears throat> and then if we come around to the back side of the camper, you have a third access point to that same storage as well. So lots of ways to get at your gear. The bumper does have um, storage inside of it for a sewer hose. And then underneath, right here, you are going to have a receiver hitch um, that comes with the camper. That's going to be rated for 250 pounds, so good for a bike rack or a storage platform, anything like that. You do have a ladder to the roof, so it is a full walk-on roof. So you can get up there and check the seals or keep your solar panels clear, things like that. Okay, so yeah, here we are inside the 265 RDS Fox Mountain. So when you first come in the door to the right here, you're going to have a few things, one of which is your main control panel for the camper. So right here you're going to have a bunch of different things. You're going to have your water tank monitors. So as you use water in the camper, you can just press and hold these buttons. As your water tanks fill up, you know, the LEDs will illuminate and show you how full your holding tanks are. Right here you're going to have the two switches for your water heater. So as I mentioned, um, the water heater can be run off of either propane gas or 110 volt electricity. So both of the switches for those are right there. You've got the switch for your water pump. So if you're using water from the tank using the pump, you can just flip that on right there. The switch for your porch light. So that's just going to be the light um, directly above the entry door on the outside of the camper. The switch for that's right there. And then you do have an entry light switch. So as you first walk in the camper, That'll be the first light you have right there. Down on the bottom of the panel, you do have the switch for your slide out. Your main slide out, I should say. This camper does have two. Um, 
So that switch is going to be right here, and then next to it is going to be the switch for your power awning to extend and retract that. Lastly, right here, if you do add the onboard generator, you can start and stop that using the switch right here, as well as monitor how many hours you've run the generator for to help keep track of you know, things like when to change oil, things like that. Up above here, you have a couple more light switches. Those are going to be exterior light switches. So for example, the switch for your big light strip on your awning, that's gonna be right there. The main living room lights are on a dimmer switch, which is nice. You can control the level of light right there. And then up above here, you're going to have the solar charge controller for the camper. So as I mentioned, standard from the factory, this camper is going to come with 45 watts of solar, which will basically act as a tender for the batteries, which is nice. You can order additional solar from the factory if you'd like, otherwise get more installed by a dealer or yourself. Um, so what this tr charge controller will do is basically control the current going to the batteries to make sure they're charged properly by the solar, basically regulate the power going to the batteries. It'll also provide a constant uh, readout of battery voltage and charge current. You can also program it depending on what type of batteries you have. So you can set it, for example, to uh, wet cell batteries, lithium batteries, you know, depending on what you have. To the left, so this will be the rear of the camper, you have this really big King U dinette. <clears throat> What's really cool about this is this table is totally adjustable. Um, you have several levers underneath. You can actually slide this tabletop forwards, backwards, spin it raise it, lower it, you know, whatever you'd like to do. Um, this does fold all the way down and can make into additional sleeping. Um, you can just rearrange the cushions and then have a pretty decent sized sleeping area back here. Nice big overhead storage compartments up top. Um, to the right of the entry door inside the camper, you're gonna have a few things. So you are gonna have your stereo down low here. So that's gonna have AM, FM radio, Bluetooth. Um, it's gonna be a CD and a DVD player, which is already hooked up to the TV. And then you can also control the indoor and outdoor speakers right here. So you can control the volume separately, which is really nice. And then some nice drawer storage there. Uh, the camper does come standard with the TV that you see here. This can um, swing out. If you pull down on the latch right here, it will release and you can swivel it so that you can easily view it from the dinette as well as get to this nice storage behind the TV. As you can see, it's also going to come with a sound bar up above the TV, which is a nice touch. Here you've got the Furion microwave. So that'll be powered off of 110 volt electricity. Um, below that, you're going to have the hood vent um, so you can run the fan and a light um, while you're cooking. You're going to have a three burner gas cooktop. So that is going to be direct spark um, right here so you don't have to worry about uh, lighting that with a grill lighter or anything. You're also going to have an oven which is also lit using the same, same switch as the stovetop. Below the oven there is going to be your furnace unit itself. Um, the heat is ducted through the floor of the camper, but the unit itself is going to be underneath the oven right there. You've got your nice double basin sink, great for doing dishes. Some nice storage underneath the sink, as well as nice easy access um, to everything you need for winterization. You've got your bypass valve for the water heater there, as well as an extra hose attached to the water pump there for sucking antifreeze into the camper. So nice and easy to get to, no panels you have to remove or anything like that. Um, some nice drawers here, and then down below, you do have easy access to your fuses and circuit breakers. So almost all of the fuses and breakers for the camper are going to be right there. On the wall here, you have a switch for your ceiling fan. So the ceiling fan in the camper is going to be operated off of 110 volt electricity. So as long as you have that, um, you can power the ceiling fan. Up here, you're going to have 
um, the switches for your holding tank heaters. So the Fox Mountain fifth wheels are four season campers. They have things such as thermal pane windows and tank heaters. So these are powered off of 12 volts off the batteries. So in below freezing temperatures, you can flip those on and it'll help keep your tanks heated, help keep the water from freezing up. And then next to those switches here, you're going to have your thermostat. So that'll control your furnace um, and your air conditioner, um, both from the wall right here. <clears throat> Around here on the driver's side of the camper, so this is going to be the main slide out here, um, you're going to have your two-way Norcold refrigerator. So that's going to operate off of propane and 110 volt electricity. You can also set it to automatic so that it'll switch back and forth um, depending on the power you're supplying. And then here you do have um, the sofa. So this is going to have the um, optional sleeper sofa. So this will make into another sleeping area. You can also get this with the theater seating. Um, just a couple things up on the ceiling here. So there's that ceiling fan we talked about, the switch for that's on the wall. And then you do have the WineGuard gateway router. So that'll do two things. That will act as a Wi-Fi booster. So if you're camping somewhere that has Wi-Fi, it will basically pull the signal in and help boost the signal. Otherwise, you can add a SIM card to that. You can purchase a SIM card from your cellular provider, put it in there, and then the camper will act as a Wi-Fi hotspot. So um, Here we've got the steps up into the bedroom and bathroom area. So off to the right, as you walk up, is going to be the bathroom. So a pretty good size. Sink here. Uh, nice, nice, long, wide shower as well as a medicine cabinet there. You are going to have a fantastic fan in the bedroom, so a nice, or in the bathroom, excuse me, a nice exhaust fan on the ceiling. And then stepping up into the bedroom, so this wardrobe behind me here is actually going to be your second slide out. So the switch is going to be right up here on the ceiling. So this will bump out, give you some nice nice room to get beside the bed here, and then also provide you with a nice deep um, wardrobe there with some drawers underneath. You do have another fantastic fan up above um, the bed here. This one's actually going to be controlled by a remote um, that mounts down next to the bed, so you can lay down in bed and control it just right from where you are. There is storage underneath the bed as well. This lifts up and you have a pretty good amount of storage underneath right there. You are going to have USB chargers on both sides of the bed. Those are going to be 12 volt powered off of the batteries. So even if you don't have 110 volt electricity, those will still have power. You also have your traditional 110 volt outlets on either side. And then beside me, you do have some more storage here. So that's going to be a nice wardrobe area there. 